Guy, you know, I, I like what you said on one of the panels that uh, someone asked you what industry you liked and you said, look, I've been in the same industry for 20 years and that's looking at opportunities uh, that are asset backed. Yeah. So over the next three years, what do you think the opportunity set is for you as you look out there to get uh, capital allocated? Yeah, I think what, what's happened in Europe is that we had from 82 through to 2007, assets did incredibly well. Uh, and it meant the banks put on bigger and bigger balance sheets uh, of assets, unlike in the States where yes. it, it was just intermediated. When 2007 happened, the banks got left holding these uh, huge quantity of loans. Those loans have not flowed through the system yet. And what's happening is just slowly as the bank's balance sheets improve, they're beginning to sell off some of those loans or effectively sell the companies. Because for the most part, they've taken control by now. Yes. As those companies come onto the market, They've been starved of capital investment. They've been starved of good management. And it's a great opportunity for us to, to take over those businesses and manage the assets in a much more proactive way. Right. Uh, how the new management teams or incentivize the existing management teams, spend money on CapEx, spend and do mergers and acquisitions. So it's a lot of what I would describe as the, the, the zombie companies of Europe, which have assets, um, are still um, stuck. Um, almost as, as they were back in 2007. When you, when you look at that type of opportunity, what kind of skill sets do you have that's, uh, that you can apply directly to that opportunity set that perhaps some other groups simply uh, can't or won't do? Some of it comes simply through practice, having done the same thing you know, 33 times in 20 years. Right. The, the, the number one place we start is strategy. If you don't have a very clear idea of where you're going, then frankly, you're never going to arrive. So you've, you've got to get the strategy right. And we take strategy right back, right from the beginning and say, what should this company be doing with these assets? And you know, that's, it's quite an interesting thing. You know, for example, you take a, an, an, an industry like you know, garden centers. Right. The assumption was garden centers sell plants. When you actually look at what they sell, plants are only a, only a less than, way less than 40% of what they sell. So you then actually have to sort of analyze it. Once you've worked out the strategy, you've then got to get a management team which buys into that strategy. That's often difficult from the people who've been there already. Yeah, because right. they've, been, they've been running one strategy. And to be fair to them, often that strategy was right when they started. But over time, things change. Yeah. And when a company is sitting in bank control, it often doesn't change. So you get the strategy right, then you get the management team right. The next thing is give the company money to spend on CapEx and allow it to reinvigorate itself. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you're rather agnostic too as, as far as what you'll go after. Uh, you've been in real estate, you've been in these uh, changing businesses. Uh, what are the, the, the core attribute that you're looking at though when, when, that brings your interest into something? It's having an asset in a business which we see as sustainable. Now, sustainable doesn't mean um, exciting. So, for example, if we look at a, a, a business which maybe has a collection of brands, yes. that could be an incredibly good investment, but the volatility of those brands for us is, is too much. By contrast, when you look at uh, something like, uh, for, for example, residential real estate, it's incredibly granular. Now, yeah. if, you, if you're buying high-end and you're spending five million on a property in London, that's not granular. <laughs> right. There's a few people in the world who can do that. It's very much dependent on what's happening in different parts of the world. But if you're talking about the sort of, sort of houses we have in the UK, which are 160,000 pounds and 1,400 square foot in secondary locations, probably, probably tertiary locations, that's much more granular. Those, those are properties which appeal to, 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 to doctors and nurses and teachers and policemen and farmers, etc. Yes. So what we call key workers. And that's the sort of business we like because that, that's not going to go out. It, it's going to continue. Does it have the huge upside? No. But is it reasonably, is it very sustainably? Yes. And then your upside comes from where you can add additional value to the business. Excellent. One last question. Uh, standard question. What's, what are you worried about? About the private equity industry generally? What are the things that you're watching out for that could throw things off the tracks? Um, the thing I always worry about is politicians. Um, <laughs> You know, it's, 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 you know I, I, was I was taught um, by, by the first uh, person who trained me when I went to Goldman Sachs, a chap, a chap called Shag was his nickname, and he had, he basically he, he had three rules, and then the, number f the third rule was the politicians were always 
F it up. <laughs> and so I, I constantly worry about the politicians just messing it up for us all. That's a great way to end it. Guy, thank you very much. Thank you very much.